So these boilers are a regular boiler, they're a heat only boiler. They're not a system boiler because they don't contain a pump or a expansion vessel. So this customer has changed his thermostatic radiator valve and since then he's getting no heat and hot water. So I suspect the fan is going but at a slow pace. I just want to see if it fires up. So we've not got an ignition process yet. Normally by now I would have thought we'd be getting an ignition. But the fan. Yes, yeah, so there's an issue. I would say that's not even fired, so I would say the issue is actually with the boiler. So I'm just gonna go grab some tools quick. So we're gonna have a look inside and just remove that screw there. Now you'll have to bear with me guys, because I don't do breakdowns, although I've worked on a lot of these boilers, but I don't do much on tools anymore, but I don't mind to get stuck in and have a look what's going down. Um, I personally think there's an issue, because I don't know if the fan was spinning or not, maybe it's spinning, um, and it's got power to it, then we just need to have a look at that, because in this boiler, I'm 99% sure there's no pressure switch that gets triggered from it, so it won't fire. So I bet it's no do with this, because when I listened to it, I put my head to it then, then it was showing issues. Um, we we'll have to move some of this as well below. So we'll reset it and have a look what's going again here. So it is, it's looking like it's a single speed fan. I couldn't remember if it was a double speed or so. Add two speeds or one. And um, looking at that, it's only got a live and neutral to it. So it looks like it is just one speed. Just waiting for the zones to give it a feed. Now it is running quite fast that actually, but it's not triggering that air pressure switch, which is probably why it's not firing, so we'll give it an hand. Yeah, that's what the issue is I think. This air pressure switch is the issue. Me. This thing at the back here, I think this is the issue here, what's going on. Um, there's no click on that, so we'd have to have a see if I've got, I've not got anything like that, but that's looking to me what it's like, because when I do this, oh actually I'm getting a click there, I'm actually getting a click now, let's try again. There's two things going on, I'll have to check the continuity through that in a minute, but Basically, this boiler isn't firing because either that's faulty or this venture is blocked in that fan, which is stopping it trigger. Nothing. So what we'll do, we'll just have to do a quick view. Going to check the continuity of this switch which is difficult very difficult because i've got to be kind of here and holding these here this is where an apprentice would come in handy so that now should be dead across those two so when i suck on this should kick that switch across so what you're hearing there is a made switch so the idea is that if that fan doesn't go it doesn't allow the boiler to fire up that switch is definitely working uh, according to that there now the next test he's trying to get in to the limit stack because he's put the TR in I'm just wondering if he's overheated the boiler I think he has personally but it's not a non-resettable unfortunately yeah so that's gone it feels like that's gone if I'm on that I'm going to breach that out in a second um, I'll just get back to you guys when I breach that out because I need to grab some numbers so Bradley could you just pass me those testers down there please so I can get in here. I feel like it's overheated and damaged the limit stat, which will stop the boiler from firing up. So once we get it fired up, it doesn't need to say we've fixed the bloody problem neither. So, nope, we're we getting it now. So yes, we're getting continuity through that now, which we wasn't getting before. So bridging it out won't make any difference. So we know there's an issue, it's more than likely somewhere with the PCB, so we're looking at different things now. So we're going through it. 
So the fan's running. We're just now going to check if it's throwing bolty. I don't know if that's a 24 volt switch or a 240 to be quite frank with you, but we're going to find out. It looks possibly 240, but we'll soon find out. And it has had some fettle in here. You can see, I don't even think that's the original switch. Looking at that, but I don't know. Right, let's go for that. Let's try again. See what we've, we can come up now with. Oh, sorry, I need to turn it back on. So reset again. Test is on unit. Let it kick in. As it's changing up over upstairs, it'll put a life feed to here, one of these supplies. So central eating out, direct that to right, and then direct it off. So the, the supplies will come in here, there's a switch. Um, and then you've got your programmer in. So basically, yeah, that's as simple as that really. So programmer wiring, central eating out, direct hot water out, right, and then direct hot water out here. So all these wires have a purpose of what they're doing. So without them, the boiler wouldn't work. People just think they've got like three wires to each one and one. I'm not going to get into what every single one of them in just at this moment. So just making a note of what, what they actually do. Um, unless you really want to do, you can ask that on another episode, but I can kind of show you here. So voltage, can you see there? It's still waiting. Voltage, still waiting. Nothing there, I suspect. 240 volts. So permanence switch so your switch wire is coming back from the demand here so that's where you'll be getting your demand so these ones here and the central heating out possibly will be a pump so if you look further underneath it might tell you a little bit more on that wire and so you've got your mains as it does there coming in and then your pump actually my mistake is here so you can send your pump out to that and what that so we can have a pump over and etc so this is your mains coming in here these three earth live and neutral you've got something here which is your switch back from your boiler and then you've got a live i have a feeling looking at this that that goes out to your pump when there's a demand on um like i said it's been a while since i've been looking at these boilers but they don't ever change really so we're just testing now, we've checked that, we're testing is everything working, so we should have a live there, which we've got, that goes out to the pump. We've got a live in, drop that panel down, let's see what's going on here. So at the minute, four volts, four volts. I'm certain, looking at this, that that's just a low voltage switch, looking at the wires, etc. Now that's to me, is switching across because we are getting through it, so we are picking up something, it's very low. But it's just of AC voltage. Now I don't know if that should be higher than what it is. I'm not 100% sure. So what we could try is by linking it out. But it's looking to me like there's an issue with the PCB because these the limit stats working correctly. So to me, it's looking like the PCB. And the mister could be an issue. Um, but when I go onto the the switch, that's going working perfectly. So we know that that's not the issue. So it's, I personally it's probably suffered. A lot of heat this boiler and that's why it's given the issues okay so my diagnosis is a floor sensor and um, going out to the boiler and also a pcb looking at this because it's getting all the voltage it's just not going to ignition which is concerning i will obviously check the ignition as well on the boiler but i don't think it is i don't think it's going to go to ignition hey, i've currently got to this boiler the customers rang up it's getting no eating or hot water he's told me they've had a pcb changed um just before i stripped it down etc and had a look at it i thought i'll have a look at the condition of it it does look in good condition so what i've been going to have a look is why it's not firing now so basically this boiler's not firing uh, why would it not fire it worked perfectly well before i would say that it's probably overheated and damaged the limit stat so i'm just going to check the limit stat to see we continue to where we're up to and see we want zeros there on that limit stat um uh, zero resistance really now we've currently got, which is very interesting, let me just get it on the right side, nothing. So we would say that that is an issue, but oh, it's just what we're getting, we're getting. So yeah, it's, it's a little on the high side, because it's 50, 60. So we have got a little bit of resistance there. So that really truthfully should be like a, a, a zero, reading no, no resistance. So what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna, under safety and checking it making sure 
everything's okay and I don't recommend you do this at home or anybody who's not gas safe I'm going to bridge out that sensor and see if what it is that so if you just bear me a second I'm just going to nip to the van and get some stuff and we'll bridge it out I have brought a bridge front van but it's probably easiest to just do it from here so I'm going to do it from here um, so basically that how it works this is a safety device it's called an air pressure switch that makes sure that that fan's running so that the boiler doesn't fire without it because it's not great for the boiler so I'm going to test it how do we do it we remove the sensor that it's going through so what it does is it goes through that sensor if it gets warm it breaks this link so it, excuse me it can't fire so I'm just going to disconnect that off there so it's now no longer part of the link and just put it directly on now I have a feeling that it's going to fire this now um, etc so we're just going to click that in now and see what happens on the switch I have a feeling it will fire now I do not recommend because this is something only a gas safe engineer can do while he's testing etc so we stand back make sure it's clear and we just put it on see what happens now we're looking for this boiler to fire. If it doesn't fire, then it's definitely the PCB. The time of uh, test Brad this. Let's see, is he getting a warm Christmas or not? Right, it is that sensor. Uh, which is the high limit sensor that's causing the issue we've just proven that it's if we can get one for before christmas so we can't legally leave that boiler so i'm going to deliver the news to the person whose house it is and let him know but however i just need to let the boiler fire up while i'm here check over it and see if it gets system warm because there's a reason why that's been triggered now it's probably because he's either done the TRV and not switched the boiler off and it's cooked and overheated or is basically um when he's filled he's not got the air out of it and just make sure i said that right when you, it's dead important that when people are working on systems that they do that, so it's switched off because some people will start draining, it'll drain down and then it'll trigger that high limit because it'll just overheat and it's very dangerous for the boiler as well. Well, it's not good for the boiler. So I'm going to put it back together now, guys, and go and deliver the news to the customer. As I'm putting it back together, it was just a thought, I'm going to advise this customer that I do, even though it's quite a simple repair, um, I do recommend a new boiler. Not because I'm trying to get a boiler out of him, just because of the age of the boiler, the efficiency of the boiler, and also, um, there, there's inevitably something go but it just depends on budget so if for instance he said right i'll go for a new boiler we won't charge for this call which is 99 pounds so we won't charge that at all we'll just do it for free because we get the boiler out of it so if he wants to go ahead with the repair he can do it it's it's one of them the fan's not new the pcb i think has been replaced the it's do we spend the money on a new boiler or not now off experience he's gonna have to change this at some point anyway no it's not the ideal time so we might just go for a new boiler um sorry go for a, a repair the repair what shouldn't be too expensive 100 percent well basically what's been triggered is what we call the high limit star okay. and what that is it's a thermostat that sits in the boiler that protects it okay if it overeats right okay and usually when it's been triggered it's down to lack of water in the heat exchanger so it yeah. won't work so we need to replace that i'm going to get one today probably not so your boiler's yeah. now working you're thinking how's okay. he got it working right. i've bridged it out now there's a problem with this right and the problem is I can't let you legally use this boiler like this right. because it's no protection on it. So there you go. Okay. So we're just going to see now that the system gets warm because I know what it needs now. Paint it on that side, isn't it? So it could be down to the fact that you might have an issue with the system filling. <coughs> so when he's filled the system back up, yeah. it's airlock got locked into that heat exchanger and done it. And believe it or not, even with qualified engineers, we can make that happen. Yeah. But what I always tell people, we're working on an old boiler, Blah, blah, blah. So we'll go on to the next bit. I can fix this boiler and get you a call. That's not an issue. It's ready for changing. Yeah, it's the age of it. So I don't know if I want to spend any more. Now, if you go for a new boiler, yeah. we don't charge you the diagnostics okay. as we treat it as a quote. But if it were me in this house, I'd probably go for a cotton there. Yeah, well, to be fair, we found out the hard way with uh, the bloody water tank by it because it's got a big tank in. What sort of price is it? For? Well, I can give you a price. So I think. Is it got a pressurized cylinder this? Is that, is upstairs, that yeah. basically downstairs I, it is a heat only boiler but what they've done they've made it a system by pressurizing it with a pressurized system where you top it up just like you would with a combi so it's pressurized with no tanks this is a pressurized cylinder so this is throwing a little bit of another loop into it now let's have a look we've got quite a bit of heat here up in the system the pump's cold so I would just say that this is probably, hopefully, just an airlock. Um, so I should be able to purge that through. 
just sounds like it's really, really, really um, aerated to me. It doesn't sound serious, to be honest with you. We have got a little bit of magnet. No, we haven't, it's a lie. There's no magnetic not pulling there. So all valves are both open. So when he comes back with towel, thank you very much. Let me bleed some air into his pump. Do you want to just come in here Brad? So that's the pump and that's the bleed key. So what we're trying to do is get all the air out of here. There's quite a bit of integration. And you can hear the pump making different noises. So we're just waiting till we get a bit of temperature. We have got a bit of heat now. We're waiting for that noise. So you can hear that there now. That's a huge airlock shifting. Can you hear that Brad? Yeah. So that's just a bleed there. Now we are probably are gonna have a little bit more air in that. Got it calm down. Be one and two. It needs to be roughly one yeah. really, but it's close. It's, it's more close to the one than it is two. Yeah, good. So that now is circulating. So now it is just an airlock. So it's up to him if he, if he wants to go ahead with a new boiler. So what we'd have to do is get a hot feed to this. So the boiler is roughly over here somewhere. So there's two ways we can do it. Go up into the attic and straight across. So we just run a feed. I'm pretty sure it's around about here, the boiler look inside the garage. It might be here. Could even be in here. Uh, so we hopefully we'd be in one of these cupboards. So we could just run the hot over. Now that is a big run. It's just the reason why I said that these floors are a bit dodgy. That's not the best run, but I don't think there's any of who wants to go over to a combi other than that. Um, because they're the closest to him. You've got his heating up and running now. Unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to turn it off because I can't leave it bypassed out we'll get the part hard so he's gonna have no eating or not water over christmas which is a bit grim um so yeah we we'll have to switch it off so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna isolate the gas supply and, and turn it off and just take it from there and then get, hopefully get in the part before i come to unboxing day and get it but i just know i'm not gonna get it so i really wish to put them away and tell him the bad news now but yeah thanks for watching guys so basically you okay with filming aren't you yeah yeah um basically your boiler currently, I can't leave it on as you know, it's currently running. The limit stat has gone, so obviously when I leave I'm going to disconnect all this. I should be able to get the part for it in about, hopefully, Boxing Day day after, something like that. If I can get it, it's probably doubtful Boxing Day to be honest with you, yeah, after Boxing Day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you do want to swap it, we can certainly swap it. It's quite easy to do. It's just getting the hot water pipe on and we worked out a route. Roughly this is coming into that bedroom there and there's some cupboards somewhere. So I'm thinking of going up in the cupboards, up into the attic and dropping down to the cylinder okay. cupboard for the hot. You've got your cold main there. The gas pipe's 22 there, it's only meters away. We can utilize some of this electrics here if we have to put new in, but it's pretty straightforward to swap it. I'd estimate about two days and I'd recommend a power flush on it. Um, what was causing the issue originally, The when your friends fit the TRV, you just not bled the pump, some massive airlock in it, which has then caused the heat exchanger to overheat and damage the sensor. That's, right, okay. the, that's what it's there to design for. Right, okay. so, Thanks very much, pal. No, Appreciate thank you. it. Appreciate so, you coming on. Hope you have a shit hot notice.